This is the third in a series of videos exploring arrays in Delphi. In this video we will learn how to randomize the elements of an array. In lessons 15.1 to 15.3 we created this math quiz project. The program gives the user 10 math quizzes and with every correct answer 10 points are added to the scoreboard. As you can see the program randomizes the numbers for the quiz but not the operator. Currently we only present additions to the user. Today we will change this application to also present other mathematical operators like minus and multiply. We will not make it too hard to answer a quiz, so we will not include division operators. Our code must then also randomize the operators. We will store the operators in an array of characters and then randomize the elements in the array. Hi, it's Gerard here from Learn Delphi. I'm a trainer in programming languages and in this series I help you to understand Delphi programming step by step and line by line. If this video is helpful to you, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And I also publish all the links I mention in this video in the description box below. In all our lessons I start with the code immediately. I do not demonstrate how to create the graphical user interface. That is so that you only focus on the code of the lesson we are doing. If you save the project we programmed in lesson 15.3, you can go ahead and open it. But if you are new here and you want to follow what I'm doing, but you want to save some time, you can download the project to start immediately where I start with this lesson. This lesson will also make sense if you first watch lesson 15.1 to 15.3 before you start with this lesson. The starter and project files are available for download from my Patreon page at patreon.com slash learndelphi. I also posted that link in the description. And I'm using the Alphi 10.3 Community Edition to demonstrate these lessons. There's also a link in the description if you want to download the free copy of Delphi. You can pause the video here and go and do the downloads. Here I have my project open in Delphi. If you have your project open, let's jump into it. Here's how it looks. Let's first run the program to see what we did in the previous lessons. When the program starts, this label is blank. It must show the user score after answering each question. And this panel must show the math quiz. It is also blank initially. The edit initially displays zero and it is disabled. This panel notifies the user how to use the program, but it will also display if the answer is correct or not. Click the start button. Now this label shows the question number. And this panel starts the score at zero. And this panel displays a random math quiz. Notice that the plus operator is given. The edit is now also enabled so the user can submit his answer. And this panel tells the user to press tab to submit the answer. I will go ahead and answer. Then you must press the tab key. After submitting my answer, the panel displays correct in green font. And I get 10 points for the correct answer. Now let me answer a few quizzes. While I'm doing that, you can check how the program gives me more additions to do. Also check how the scoreboard adds 10 points with every correct answer. At this point, I accumulated 60 points so far. Here I will submit the wrong answer. Now this panel displays the correct answer in red font. And my score stays on 60 points. I will continue and complete the first round of 10 questions. Ok, this is the last question in this round. I will submit the correct answer. After I submit the 10th answer, this message box pops up. And it shows you to click play again to start another round of 10 questions. Also notice this message. If you scored above 70%, this message will be green, and if you scored below 70%, it will show a red failure message. I will go ahead and click the OK button and take it for another round. Everything resets to the default values, and we still get only additions. Now let's quickly walk through the code before we add the random operators. If your program is running, you can go ahead and close the form. Click the code tab here on the bottom of the IDE. We declared all our variables here under the implementation clause. INT question number keeps track of each question number. And INT user answer stores the user's answer that the user typed into the edit. INT correct answer stores the correct answer calculated by the program to match it with the user answer. And INT score keeps track of the scoreboard. INT left operand is the random number in front of the operator. And INT right operand is the random number at the back of the operator. And CHR operator is for the operator. Currently it only stores a plus. This event handler is triggered when you click the next button. Here we increment the question number, then we show it in a label. Here we set the properties of the edit when the user clicks the next button. The button also serves as the play again button, so here we make sure it shows the word next. Here we display the score in a panel. Then we reposition the seat of the randomizer with the randomized procedure. I did explain the randomization in lesson 15.1 to 15.3. 
If you are unsure about randomization, go watch those lessons first. These two statements get random numbers from 1 to 10 and assign it to the variables that will be used on the left and the right side of the operator. And here we assign a plus character to CHR operator. A char can only store one character at a time, so this statement must change. Then we display the math quiz in a panel by concatenating the operands and the operator. Further down, we also have code that runs when the focus moves away from the edit. This event handler executes every time the user presses the tab key. We use a case statement to check which operator was used in the quiz. If it is a plus, we add the first operand to the second operand and we store the result in anti correct answer. When we created the math quiz project, we also included these two statements to calculate the correct answers for subtractions and multiplications. So these two statements were not necessary because we only did additions. But now that we have them, the program can use it. Notice we look for an x because we will present an x to the user for multiplication. But when the program calculates a multiplication, it uses an asterisk. This if statement checks if the user's answer matches the correct answer. If so, it increments the score with 10 points, and then we display the new score. We also display correct in the panel and change the panel's font color to green. The else branch executes if the user's answer doesn't match the correct answer. We show that the answer is wrong along with the correct answer. And here we change the font color to red. Then we disable the edit again, because we want to prevent the user to change the answer now that he can see the correct answer. This if statement sets up the user interface after you answer the 10th question. We change the caption of the next button to play again, and we make the assessment panel visible. A nested if statement checks if the final score is greater than 70%. If it is, the panel's font color is set to green, and we show a pass message along with the percentage. If the score is below 70%, we set the font color to red, and display a fail message and a percentage in the assessment panel. Here we also show a message box to notify the user that the first round ended and to click the play again button for a new round of quizzes. With these two statements we reset the question number and the score to zero. Now we must make minor changes to display random operators. Scroll back to the implementation clause. We will still use all these variables. The char variable can only store one operator at a time, but we will still use it in our code. Make a new line under the char variable. Type ARR operators as array 1, 2, 3 of char. Here we declare a char array with three elements. I will only include plus, minus and multiply, but if you really want to make it challenging, you can also include division. Your array must then have four elements. Also notice my naming convention. I am using a singular noun for the name of the char variable, because a char variable can only store one character at a time. But the name of the array is ARR operators, a plural noun, because a character array can store multiple characters at the same time. Scroll down a little bit. Here near the end of the on click of the button, we assign a plus operator to CHR operator, and we edit this comment. Now let's delete this part between the brackets. Go one line down, type ARR operators, followed by one between square brackets, followed by colon equals with the plus between single quotes. Go one line down, type ARR operators, followed by two between square brackets, followed by colon equals, minus also between single quotes. Press enter again, and type ARR operators, followed by three between square brackets, followed by colon equals X, the X also between single quotes. Here we assign the three operators we want to present in the math quiz to the elements of the array. The multiplication symbol we want to display is an X, but remember I showed you earlier that the program will calculate the correct answer with an asterisk. Go on a new line and type this comment. CHR operator can only store one operator. We used a plus in the previous version of the application. Now we can use it to pick a random element from the array, and then use the operator stored in that element. Remove the plus character from this assignment. Replace it with this expression. Here we randomize the indices of the array. We get a random index from 1 to 3. 
The random number that is found will now be the index between square brackets that is now used to point to the element with the corresponding index. So we are not really randomizing the characters in the array. We randomize three numbers and use the number that is returned as the index of the element we want to read. The random character is then assigned to CHR operator. Scroll to the event handler that handles the on-click event of the edit. You can now remove these two comments. The rest of the code stays the same. Let's test it. Run the program. Do a few quizzes and make sure you get random additions, subtractions and multiplications. Next time we will explore two-dimensional arrays with a new project. If you had fun, please leave a comment. And if you learned something new, please like, subscribe and share my lessons with your friends. Thank you for watching and a special thank you to my supporters on Patreon.com. Happy coding! See you next time!